Well, good morning, everyone. This is Michael DeVille coming to you from beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Heather and I are in the West USA studios, and this is another Creating Real Estate Wealth live webinar. You know, our mission here is to try and improve your life, give you some more financial reserves, and remember that retiring is a financial decision, not an age. Now, I talked about the startling statistic that over 100 million Americans have absolutely nothing in their retirement accounts. And we don't want this to happen to you. So we've been running these uh, webinars trying to kind of motivate you to maybe have some, to think about this, to have some questions. We're here. If we can help you in any way, we're going to. We've been going over the strategies. And remember, there's lots of strategies. There's lots of ways to make money in the real estate industry. We've been going over the strategies. This week, we're going to talk about what everybody's favorite. They even do uh, TV shows on this, Fix and Flips. Everybody loves Fix and Flips. Next week, we're going to talk about student housing. But today, oh, Heather, you need to, I can't move forward to the next one. Sorry. That's no problem. So we just want to go through. We've got these slides. There we go. So next week is student housing. And this week, we're going to talk about one of my favorites and everybody's favorite, a fix and flip. What are the skills necessary to acquire a profitable residential flip? What's the attraction to the strategy? Well, we all know what that attraction is. What can go wrong? Now, that is probably one of the big questions. What can possibly go wrong? Because if you have a fix and flip and you have something go wrong, generally it's something big that went wrong. And we want to talk about that. We also want to talk about a strategy of maybe you want to consider renting the property for 12 months so that you capture capital, long-term capital gains, how that might work for you. It depends on where you are in a cycle and what additional strategies can we employ to enhance our profit picture for you. So fix and flips, what exactly is a fix and flip? Well, you all know what that is. We're purchasing a residential property, a residential property, a single family home with the sole intent to rehabilitate it and, re and remarket it for a profit. Typically, when we get these properties, there's something wrong. There's something wrong that it's not on the market or you're, or you're dealing in a distressed property. And a distressed property typically has deferred maintenance, has some problems with it. And it's up to you to cure what the problem is. And you'll cure it and make a significant profit or gain. That is the whole goal of doing this. Now, again, we work as a strategy. We do this professionally. So what skills are necessary to do this? Well, this is where your knowledge is absolutely priceless. You make your money when you buy the unit. Now, I hope that you're doing this as a business. So when you look at this property, we want you to get out your forms and start going through your condition reports and say, what do I have to do to this property to bring it up to not only market, but above market to make it enhanced so that I can make the maximum return on my investments. You need to know what the list is. It starts by what are you going to buy it for? We need to know in the condition that it's in, as you're viewing it, what is it work today? What is that property worth as it stands right now? That is priceless information. So. Let's say the property is worth $300,000 as it stands. What can you buy it for? Now, if you need to make sure that you can buy it back of retail so that you've got a margin of error in the property, oftentimes we're going to want to buy this uh, back. Now, in today's market, that's very, very difficult because we have such demand and you're probably in competition. But ideally, we'd like to buy this around 270, 275, maybe less than that. So we have some kind of margin of error because we do have we do have costs. And it's that margin that is going to guarantee you a profit. If you cannot make a margin of profit on this uh, transaction, 
why are you doing it? Now, you need to get out your pencil and paper and write this down on your uh, on your conditions report as to what you think it's going to be worth. And this is where your knowledge or working with a broker is absolutely crucial that we know that that property is $300,000. It's not 290 or 295, it's 300,000 because each dollar goes right into your pocket. So let's say we bought it at 270. That gave us a fairly nice uh, uh, return. So we've got a little bit of cushion into it. We wanna make more than that if we possibly can. Keep in mind while we're negotiating today that price is always a consideration. Price is not always the number one consideration. Oftentimes when you have people that uh, have had a pretty good uh, profit on their, on their properties, they say, I only need $100,000 to make my next move and you can have the rest. If you solve, uh, if you do all the repairs, if you close quickly, if you let me stay in the property, typically they might have some kind of motivation. You need to discover what that motivation is because it's not always highest price. So let's get back to what skills are necessary. When we're looking at the updates on the property, get your condition report out and start checking off what needs to be done. Oftentimes, if you have an older property, like something in uh, South Scottsdale, it might be 40, 50, 60 years old, there's going to be a lot of updating to do in that property. You need to go through and make a list of everything that needs to be done. If it's cabinets that need to be rep repaired, if it's electrical, oftentimes in an old property, we're gonna have to do roof and uh, heating and cooling, electrical, oftentimes we have very, very old um, uh, electrical. Sometimes you need to be concerned when you're getting into a property that's old that they don't have galvanized pipe. This is where it's really, really um, important that you understand where you are and what it's gonna cost. Not only is it gonna be what it's gonna cost, but who is gonna do this for you? We have a little trouble with subs at the moment, so we need to find a good, reliable sub. And of course, if you've been doing this more than once, you probably have a stable of vendors that you're doing business with. If you've done this before, or you're getting help from someone, you're also going to need not only what to do, but how long is that gonna take us to get that done? What's the time frame? Now, if we're getting it late in the year, say we buy it in October, it's not gonna be ready till December. December is generally a very, very quiet month for us. Not so much last year, but typically it's a much quieter market. And maybe that's not when you wanna do that. Maybe you don't wanna bring it to market in December, but that's what it is. So you need to factor in the uh, expense of added time. <clears throat> and you need to remember that when you go to purchase a flip, not only do you pay the buyer's cost, but you pay the seller's cost as well. So you have two closings, you have cost of sales, you've got escrow fees, you've got title fees, you've got financing fees. You need to put all those down. You cannot shoot from the hip with this. You cannot say, oh, it's gonna cost me $15,000 to do this, unless you absolutely positively know that $15,000 is what it's going to take you to do this. So what else do we need to know about? So what's the attraction to the strategy? Well, you can make a fortune doing this if you buy the property right. And we are in an appreciating market. We're in the accumulation phase of this real estate cycle going into the explosive phase. So you have a wind at your back. So if you buy a property below market, if you take three or four months with which to remarket the property and completely rehab it, you're going to have picked up not only the market differential when you bought it, but it's going to be appreciating. Last year here in Maricopa County, over 20% in appreciation. That's one and a half percent plus a month. So every month that you are holding a property in the, in the accumulation phase, going into the explosive phase, your property is gaining. So the rehabilitating the property brings us today to the standards. You're going to have to look at mechanical, structural, and cosmetic. You're going to have to know what is important. Is replacing all the windows important on this sale? Or are we in an entry level where maybe just putting sunscreens in? We don't want to be speculating at the disposition will net us a significant 
uh, profit, we want to be sure and we put it all down so that we know in a strategic and business-like fashion that we're going to make money on this. So here's what can go wrong. Typically, if you buy the property at a good price, you make your money. Again, you know in our business, you make your money on the way in. However, if you misjudge the acquisition price and overpay for the property, you can find yourself in trouble. Now, in 2006, 7, and 8, people started buying properties at the wrong prices, and they got hurt on the way down. We don't want that to happen to you. We want you to be absolutely certain when you get your acquisition price that that is the correct acquisition price. There's data everywhere. You're welcome to call us. We're more than happy to sit and brainstorm with you to get this done right. So this is a problem. It's the acquisition. We can cure that problem. We're professionals. We want you to make sure that you use your CMA forms that we give you and make sure that 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 property is exactly what you think it is. You could also misjudge the rehabilitation cost. This is a problem. Oftentimes we talk about the fact that we'd like you to be working in your universe of homes where you work before, you know the area, you know the product. Oftentimes we have subdivisions of the same home. You know what kind of plumbing is in there. Do they have galvanized piping in there? Because oftentimes when you start to repair, you think you may just have to redo the fixtures for plumbing. And then you find out that, oh, my Lord, it's not copper, it's galvanized. And now you have to repipe the entire home. And oftentimes it's also the sewer connection. So if you misjudge what the rehabilitation cost, you can lose tens of thousands of dollars. Again, we have the expertise. We're here more than happy to sit and brainstorm with you and review these costs with you. Also, one of the major concerns is when you look at a property, we misjudge what the rehab value is going to be, the market rehabilitation value, the MRV. We want to look at that and we want to know because there's a very nice delta between, a, a, un, uh, be, between one that has not been updated to one that has. Also, when you're doing your rehabilitation, what are the right things to put in? Do we put in white cabinets? Do we put in gray cabinets? Do we put in wood? Do we put in metal? Do we use quartz? Do we use uh, granite countertops? Do we use stainless steel? What kind of floorings do you put in? When you're working in an up, uh, upper scale, you know that you need to have some very, very nice things in there. So you can't just put pergo in. You have to use wood flooring. And there's a huge difference in cost. Again, misjudging what your rehabilitation costs are and what the market dictates you need. So if you're in a million dollar house and you put Pergo in, you are going to suffer for that. And it could be the point where you have to replace the Pergo and put in wood. So you and you're going to find that you're on the market for two or three, four months. You can't figure out why. That's because you've misjudged the market. We're here to help you with that any way we can. We want you to be successful in every way we possibly can. Now, when you buy these properties and you have a significant gain, we have taxes that have to be paid on this. We can sometimes consider changing the status from ordinary income and just a flip to long-term capital gains. Now, there's a huge difference in your taxes. If you make fifty or hundred thousand dollars and you're in a thirty-five percent tax bracket, plus you've got Obamacare, plus you've got state tax, plus you probably are going to have to pay, maybe you have to pay some Social Security on top of that, you could be paying forty or fifty percent of your profit to the government just by holding it till twelve months and a day. You can change the status of that rental to long-term capital gains. And the maximum you're going to be paid in today's marketplace is 20% and maybe some Obamacare costs, but significantly less than ordinary income. You also put a tenant in the property who is now uh, taking care of some of the uh, costs of holding it. You're going to get cash flow. You're going to get income coming in from a tenant, and you're holding the property till you get capital gains. It assists in creating a better cash flow for you and offsets future in, in, uh, improvements. You can get better returns on your capital gains. And 
in today's market, if you held it for six additional months and were appreciating at 1.5% a month, you can get a significant increase in the sales price just by holding the property and allowing you to get capital gains and for a tenant to pay you cash flow. It's a win-win. Doesn't always work for everybody. Maybe you want to roll that money out and you've got somewhere else to go. Fine, I understand it. If you have nowhere to go with the money, why not just let the money sit there and work for you? Again, we're more than happy to sit and review these with you and work with you the best way we possibly can. Now, so changing the tax uh, uh, classification gets you a reduction in your uh, uh, taxes. Uh, by doing a short-term capital gains, you're going to get it down where you're saving money on that. The rehabilitation costs, once you've done this a few times, you know that your vendors, you want to start working as a uh, contractor so that you get contractor prices, that you're getting wholesale prices versus retail. And we want you to use a, someone who is very, very knowledgeable. Always, always remember that we need to sell these properties as quickly as we can for the maximum amount of money as we can, unless we're going to hold it for long-term capital gains. But we do have cost. This is a business. So you want to make sure that we sit down, write down all our costs, what our in costs are, what our uh, selling costs are, what our rehab costs are going to be, what our holding costs are going to be. We need to take it to escrow and financing. We need um, the interest on it, taxes, any uh, permits that are going to have to be used. And we need to uh, try and determine how long this project is going to take us to, to complete. And we need another strategy. So when you buy these properties, we have a plan. You have a plan as to how much it's going to cost you and what we're going to do to sell it. So just another strategy. We're here to help you. We have forms for this. We teach this. If we can help in any way, you are welcome to give us a call. And uh, you're welcome to get a hold of me at uh, creatingwealth at, at uh, westusa.com or michael at michaellaville.com. Now, next week, we're going to talk about another one that you can make lots and lots of money doing. And here's a strategy a lot of people don't think about is student housing. We're here in Maricopa County. we got some great universities here, but we also have other companies. We have medical uh, 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 universities. We have medical uh, students that are coming in. We have people that work on motorcycles. We have all kinds of people that are coming here for six or eight weeks that are looking to uh, uh, get a certificate or get better uh, work. They're coming in for some of the technological companies, and maybe they're working uh, to, to get a, a tech certificate and they're only going to be here for six or eight weeks, and they need housing. You can align yourself with one of the big universities and provide the housing. Same with instructors. If you have a guest instructor that's coming in for eight or 10 or 12 weeks at the hospitals or at the, at the universities, they need a place to live. It's not just necessarily the students, but also the instructors. It's a great way for you to make money. We're going to talk about that next week as another strategy for you to have income coming in each and every month and try and maximize your returns. Now, again, you are welcome to uh, send your comments to creatingwealth at westusa.com. You can reach me at the corporate office, 602-942-4200. If you'd like this flyer, just email us to creatingwealth at westusa.com and we'll certainly send it out to you. If you'd like to be involved with us, if you'd like to get further education, if you'd like to uh, brainstorm, just email at creatingwealth at westusa.com. The market's fabulous. I want you to go out there and do very, very well and have an absolutely terrific day. My best to you. Bye-bye now.